All right, competition Tuesday. Uh, we're excited about today. Uh, we had a light practice yesterday morning. Uh, yesterday was our first Tell the Truth Monday. Uh, it was about the big scrimmage that we had on Friday. I was very pleased with uh, the organization of the scrimmage, uh, the game type preparation by our coaches. Uh, all these preseason games are designed, although we're going against each other, designed to give the feeling of a game, uh, get prepared for a game, and see how we do on the live action. I thought our team uh, did very well on both sides of the ball. Defense got more pressure than usual. Uh, we had a, a large number of, of would have been sacks. Obviously, I called it early. Uh, there were some one-on-one -on -one wins. Uh, there were some protection breakdowns. Uh, our offense made some big plays. Uh, there were some um, some huge plays made for some young players, especially Eric Gilbert. He looked phenomenal on a couple of big-time plays. I uh, thought Miles did very well. Had some things to um, improve on. Our young quarterbacks made some good plays. I thought our running backs ran the ball very well. Our linebackers played hard. And uh, there was an improvement on our defensive ends. I thought those guys played very well. We still got a long ways to go. Uh, but it was a good uh, first preseason game, number one. Uh, today is our first competition Tuesday. I know our guys are looking forward to a tough, hard-nosed practice. Any questions? Yeah, yeah. my days here. I mean, uh, Coach, I know uh, you can't speak to many specifics about uh, this past weekend, but uh, you, I wanted to kind of get your feeling on, on, on the class of 21, 2021 and, and, and mm -hmm. kind of the, the gathering they kind of helped put together. Uh, obviously, there was no contact and can be no contact between the, the staff and these guys, but to, to see the lengths they went through to try to organize something uh, away from the coaching staff, uh, whether it was commitments, uh, prospects, mm -hmm. And obviously, it can only benefit the program going forward. Yeah, well, we have some great leaders that are already committed to us. And uh, and we have some, some outstanding players that uh, are thinking about coming here. And uh, was, I guess they got tired of waiting. And uh, they wanted to come to Baton Rouge, and they, they arranged it on their own. Um, from what I'm hearing, they had a tremendous uh, weekend. Uh, they did a lot of great things together. I think it only brings our recruiting class um, closer. I wish uh, that, uh, you know, because of COVID-19, obviously that's the rule, but I wish the rule would have been different to where we could be with them and uh, have a complete weekend and pay their way. But they did, they did what they could. Um, obviously other schools are, are doing it. Uh, so we went ahead and, and, and did it also. Uh, our recruits decided to do it because they've been to other schools. I thought it was very beneficial from what I'm hearing. I'm talking to most of the recruits today and tomorrow. And uh, the parents, they, they really liked it. But it's not like an official visit where they get to meet the academics, they get, they get to come to a game, they get to meet with the coaches, so there's still a little work to do. Hey, Coach, good morning. Jacques from uh, WAFB. Uh, coach, John Emery, last year I think I heard you say he just needed to hit, maybe hit the weights a little harder and like basically any true freshman needed to a little bit. What have you seen out of him over the last year, and what does he need to do to get some carries this year? You know, we just talked about uh, our roster this morning with the coaching staff, and John has made tremendous improvement. Obviously, came in as a great talent, a uh, great young man right there from Destrehan, was the top running back coming out of the country, uh, had some ball security issues last year, has not had those ball security issues this year, is catching the ball very well out of the backfield, is playing for, uh, uh, on special teams, uh, become an every down back, can catch the ball, can protect, can run the ball inside, outside. Uh, he's considered a starter, as, as is uh, Chris Curry and uh, Tyron Davis. I think those three guys are considered starters in our mind. So he's doing very well. Where you'd have official visits maybe on right. game day. And I don't know, how, how, how do you see that um, 
playing out this, this fall and how, yeah. how to approach that? No, obviously it's still a dead period. Um, hopefully that they let them come to our games. And uh, we don't know that yet. Uh, we haven't been told that yet. Uh, right now, the early sign-in period is still in December. So we, you know, we have uh, 18 commitments now. We got seven more to go. Hopefully, most of them decide decide to sign in December. But you know, some of them we haven't seen play. And uh, hopefully, we can go out and see them play. Uh, it's a different year. We have to trust our evaluation off the of tape and trust that they see enough in the university to sign in December if they can't come visit. It it's definitely is different. Ron? Yeah, uh, Ed, I mean, just from watching games on TV, uh, it seems like it's really difficult for, I guess, for teams to kind of get into the game because there's no crowd. Uh, and I'm sure you, you probably watched a couple of minutes this weekend and probably like, uh, it, it just it, it just seems it's the same atmosphere. Can you talk about, I guess, what you're, what you're trying to do to, to try to jack your team up because you've got to kind of self-manufacture some energy. Yes. Well, we try to do it every day in practice and that, that's why we practice a lot of energy and we told our, our team we're going to have to provide our own energy in Tiger Stadium on Friday uh, for the scrimmage. And for the most part, they did good. But you know what? There's no way that we can duplicate the energy that our fans give us. So hopefully we can have some fans. I don't know how many we're going to have. But whatever it is, it's definitely going to be different, Ron. It's definitely something that we have to deal with. And, uh, you know, I, I think I have the best strength staff in America led by Tommy Moffat. Those guys are always screaming and clapping. But we definitely have our work to do uh, this year. Now, saying that, uh, we still have to win the game. It's the same for the other team. So uh, we're going to have to deal with it. And uh, the team that can deal with it the best is going to win. Hey, Coach. This is uh, Josh Sibley with uh, Louisiana Gridiron Football. Um, Kai got the most carries last season. Do you see LSU moving to more of a running back by committee this season uh, to encompass the different skill sets mm -hmm. of uh, all these talented backs? Mm -hmm. I see that. I can see, especially in the beginning of the year, using all three backs, maybe four. Uh, Kevin, them giving them a shot to see what they can do. But if a back is hot and you know he's, he's having a great game, we're not going to take him out. I want the best. I want our guys to do what they do best, whether it be catching the ball, blocking, outside runs, inside run. Let's use the running back in the, that can do that skill the best. Uh, when the ball is in the red zone, I want the ball in our best player's hands, whoever that player may be. So I think the situation will dictate itself of who's going to be playing to start off the game. Now, if a guy's the best in every situation, he plays. Hey, Ed, good morning. It's Matt Piscone with ESPN Baton Rouge. Uh, could you give us an update on Todd Harris and then also just generally how the safety position looks now uh, mm -hmm. with, with Kerry up and out? Yeah, we talked uh, about Todd this morning in length. He's getting better. He's not full speed yet. Uh, he's not 100% healthy, but he's getting close. Uh, we feel with the develop obviously with Jacoby Stevens and the development of Mo Hampton, that we have three guys that are starters there. And we're really excited about Jordan Toes, our young freshman. Uh, we think that he's going to be excellent. So we think we're in good shape back there. And uh, I have really three good safeties, three great college safeties that we're very pleased with. But Todd brings a lot of leadership, a lot of communication, does the right thing, makes plays, uh, can play down, can play back, can play zone, can play man, a, is a good physical tackler, and he's a good team leader for us. Hey, uh, Coach, Shannon Joseph with uh, Fox 41 in Baton Rouge. When you talk about the running back position and how you know Chris Curry's been developing, what momentum has he carried over since last year? And do you think that has a possibility of elevating him to be in the lead back going into this season? Yeah, you know, uh, you know the big game that he had, obviously he waited his turn and had an excellent game and, and provided a spark for us when Clyde was down. 
I think that gives him some confidence. I think it gives him motivation for this year. Uh, and he also can use Ty as an example. Uh, last year, nobody thought that Ty would have the year that he did, except his teammates and his coaches, and we even surpassed that. And, you know, where, where's the next LSU great back, and where's this, and where's that? And then all of a sudden, Clyde has a great year. And uh, I do believe one of those backs, or maybe a couple of those backs, or maybe all three of them will have that, that type of year this year. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, it sounded like you know the, the defensive line, you know, kind of had a pretty good scrimmage, um, you know, last last Friday. Uh, I guess kind of my question is more directed on the offensive line and just kind of how those guys are starting to gel. Uh, obviously, with the preseason scrimmage down, I mean, are those guys getting more tight knit and, and becoming more of a unit um, the last couple weeks? Yeah, you know, I think the, uh, the acquisition of Liam Shanahan really helped us out. Uh, he's smart, makes all the calls at center. That's where it all starts, the communication. It goes down the line of scrimmage. So he's given our offensive line confidence that he can do it. Obviously, a veteran player, very smart. So it starts with him. And then you got to start our left tackle, Darren Rosenthal. I think that he is going to have an excellent year. He's a big-time athlete, as we know from Faraday, that plays defense, uh, offensive defense in high school, moved over, athletic tackle. Ed Ingram has a lot of experience. And then Austin Douglas, obviously we won a championship with Austin right there, and then Chase on high. So we feel good about our front, our first five. We've got to de- be able to develop depth because, you know, as we know, in the offensive line, we don't want it to happen, but somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to have to step up, and more than likely going to be a young player. We need to get them ready. Hey, Coach O, uh, Garland Gill Fox 8 New Orleans. Uh, just listening to you over the last few weeks uh, talking about your receiver room. Uh, is it safe to assume that Terrace Marshall's the one? Would Racy be the two? And then Kayshawn Booty and Coy uh, Moore are fighting for the three. Uh, can you kind of give me an update how that's going? Because obviously, you know, we just got to go on what you're, what, what yeah. you're seeing and what uh, we're hearing. Yeah, more, more than likely what, what, what you just said. And obviously, that fluctuates day by day. A guy's going to have a hot day, but. You know, we're looking at the Keishon Butte starting a, as, a, as a freshman, I think, that is, that is locked in. Uh, Rayson McMath, uh, you know, Terrence Marshall has to be our go-to guy. Uh, we mentioned that this morning. And Eric Gilbert, I think, if you look at that, the, those are the top four receivers that we have right now. Uh, Carl Moore is coming along uh, very fast. He's, he's had a hamstring pull. He's been hurt a little bit, so he's been hampered a little bit. John Trey Kirkland is having a good camp. And, you know, we want to play six, seven, eight receivers, keep them fresh. But the guys that you mentioned are having the best camp right now. Hey, Coach, this is Shea with 24-7. I, um, you've been around recruiting and coaching your whole life. How often do you see, and even in back-to-back years now, with Stingley and Gilbert, guys who are sort of so highly touted coming out of high school and then they show up and they are who – kind of everybody thought they were type of thing. Does, is that few and far between, or, or what are some guys in the past you've seen that with? Yeah, you know, uh, I, want, I don't want to say it's few and far between, but I, I'd say it's about 50-50 down the road. You know, uh, sometimes the guys come out, they're the number one player in the country, and they come in and they play like it. Some of them, for some reason or another, are not because of the situation they are or, or the development or somebody else beats them out or whatever it may be. But... Uh, for Stingley to come in and do what he's done, I think obviously he'd been coached by his dad all his life, great character, and Corey's done a tremendous job. Then Eric Gilbert coming with all the accolades he had, obviously uh, expectations are very high, but uh, he's reached every one of those. Now he's still got to do it in the game, but those two guys we're very proud of. Hey coach, this is Matt Zenich from AO.com. I'm doing a story on Russ Calloway and just wanted to see what was it about him that made him a person of interest for you to add to the staff and just what have your impressions been of him so far since he got there? Well, Derek Panesky found him and uh, Derek is my right-hand man here, does a lot of work for me and uh, Russ's name came came across. I knew his daddy is a great coach Uh, and, you know, Russ had some um, great uh, experience at Sanford, was an outstanding coordinator, did a lot of good things. Uh, but he was hungry. He's been done big time schools. Uh, I didn't know how good he was, to be honest with you, uh, until we got him. He, his enthusiasm is infectious. 
Uh, he's an outstanding coach, uh, and taught well by his dad, learned well. I do believe the guy is going to be a coordinator and a head coach, uh, and it won't be long because he's one of those type minds. Uh, he's a great worker. He's here at 5 every morning working with Coach Ensminger. Has a bright future ahead for him. He's also a good recruiter. Uh, has a lot of the top quarterbacks on the phone every day uh, talking to him. People love him. Uh, sky's the limit for us. Hey, Coach, Michael Cobble here. Uh, just a couple of questions. Was the scrimmage live? And we saw last night in the Navy game, you know, kind of how it impacted them. How do you balance that equation? Yeah. And then just my second question would be, um, we saw Lloyd getting a starting job at Denver. Mm -hmm. you, got, you got so many guys now in the league. Uh, will you pay more attention on Sundays, or are you still too busy to yeah. really uh, be able to devote any time to them? Well, I'm answering the last one. Obviously, we're proud of Lloyd. We're proud of all our young men. Proud of Tredavious White, the, the big-time contract he got. You know, on every Tuesday, you know, not today because they haven't played, we make a cut-up and we show a Doug shows a cut-up of all our NFL guys that are doing very well. So we honor them every Tuesday. We keep up with them. We know what they're doing. It seemed like Daniel Hunter got a sack every game last week. We always showed him and guys that have done well that played at Bellasheu. So we honor that. No question about that. Now, what was your first question? Uh, just about live uh, tackling yeah. and how do you, how do you balance mm -hmm. it? Well, you know, I think it's been balanced for us already by the new rules. Uh, we're on a 20-hour work week right now. We only have 25 practices in seven weeks. So our guys are practicing four days a week, three days off. We practice on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, off Thursday and scrimmage on Friday. But Tuesday and Wednesday are heavy days. Monday's a light day. And Friday's full-speed scrimmage. I think the only way to get ready to play football is to hit. And uh, like I said this morning on the radio, you know I have to worry about these LSU Tigers hitting. We hit every day in practice that we can, but we also stay fresh. I think it's not a matter of if you hit or you tackle. It's a matter of how long you practice and how many times you do it. But we need, to, we need full speed work. We had some missed tackles uh, last uh, preseason game number one. Uh, but we got two more preseason games before a live game. Hopefully we can eliminate them. You're not going to eliminate all of them. But we're going to hit pretty hard today, and we're going to hit pretty hard Wednesday, and we're going to uh, we'll scrimmage live on Friday. Hey, uh, this is Scott Rabelais from The Advocate. Um, obviously, so much was made uh, about Joe Brady when he left to go to Carolina, and you bring in uh, Scott Linehan. But how, how much were you, you thinking – going to this year that you're going to have to, you know, break tendencies and maybe change some things anyway that people are going to try to defend now that they've seen you for a whole season. Yeah. And, and, how, and how has Scott uh, help, helped you with that? You, you talked yeah. about some of the new concepts he's brought into the offense. Well, what we did last year worked pretty good. So if we can do it the same way, the same thing, and it works, I won't complain a bit, I promise you. But Scott has brought, brought some different tendencies, brought some different stuff. He's been phenomenal. Uh, especially in the red zone and the tight zone and on third down. Uh, we have some different formations uh, still out of the spread. We have some different pass concepts still out of the spread. I think that uh, we, he brought in some different concepts, how to use different players in different positions, uh, which, which we're going to use. But again, uh, I got to compliment Joe Brady. He did a phenomenal job for us last year. And uh, I think that Coach Esmingo has been behind all this. I know he's going to work well with Scott, and we look forward to those guys having a great year. Hey, Ed, just kind of two personnel questions uh, for you. First, with Cade York, how has he been uh, kicking this uh, preseason? We haven't heard too much about him. And then with Elias Ricks, is he still kind of on track to maybe start here his freshman year? Has he played? Yeah, Cade, Cade's doing fine. Uh, he's gotten stronger. Uh, he's had a good, some good scrimmages. Uh, he's kicking a long ball very well. A lot, lot uh, better consistency this year, but he's got to have a good year. Uh, uh, we have some young guys right behind him uh, that are competing with him. It's an open competition. Right now he's our starting kicker, but he's got to prove it in the preseason games. Elias Ricks is doing very well. He did a great job in Big Cat the other day. He was very physical. He's working very hard. And uh, you're going to see a lot of Elias this, this, this year uh, as a starter, or maybe not as a starter, but definitely in a rotation, playing a lot, and we, we feel like he's going to be an outstanding player for us. We have time for two more questions, so we'll go Ed and then wrap up with Brody. 
Hey, Coach, um, all off season and even last week, we heard so much about how much you've lost. Do you think that nationally people underestimate how much talent you still have on the roster and what you are capable of this year? Yeah, I think that it's going to be a natural tendency for them to predict us not having the success that we would have if we'd had a lot of guys coming back. But as you know, Ed, that doesn't bother us. I think we have a great team. We're going to use it as an advantage. Uh, we've been picked high, we've been picked low, and none of them usually pan out. And uh, this time last year, nobody picked us uh, to go 15-0 and have a great season. So, again, we've got to block out the noise. But, you know, I, I think that, you know, those guys have legitimate reasons to say, hey, listen, they lost this, they lost that. Uh, new quarterback. I can understand where they may pick us not to have the success that we think we're going to have. But I think we are underestimated because they don't know the young talent that we have. They don't know the new coaches that we have. But again, we have to go down and prove it week, week in and week out. Ten SEC games, man. Buckle up. It's going to be fun. And then I guess we'll end with a little Miles Brennan. And you said, you know, you like what you saw, I guess, in the scrimmage. What looked good in that? And then what do you think he still needs to work on? I think his command of the offense, uh, his pocket presence, uh, still uh, seeing seeing the field a little bit better, uh, making uh, quicker decisions, uh, knowing where to go with the ball, maybe in a pre-snap read or right after the snap, uh, all things that it takes experience. But overall, we're very pleased with Miles.